one. All right, everybody. I have a whole lot of people join. We see Graham. Hey, Graham. Hope you're doing well. Um, but we're going to get started anyway. And uh, we're going to start talking about setup today. We're doing a different version of the podcast. Um, we are able to be in person and um, and chat a little bit. We're doing some recording today. We're going through some steps of the NTS for both compound and recurve. And we're at that point where we're able to do more of a, a opportunity to do a live version where we have to manipulate training aids and talk about the real deal. So and the setup is an important part. So that's what we're going to do. I might be back and forth chatting and, and working some electronics. Larry, we're going to get started and start talking ourselves through setup. Okay. I'm on then. You're on. Wow. You're on. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, so we've uh, worked through form steps of NTS and we've gotten to uh, the, the place where we want to raise our bow. And that is defined as the setup step. And uh, this is where we have some differences between recurve and compound. Uh, and in recurve, we're including the bare bow. Frank's going to demonstrate a little bit of that thing. Uh, so Let's uh, begin by defining what we do with the compound and release aid uh, and how our body is positioned when we do the setup step. So once again, setup step is the actual raising of the bow, the presentation of the bow and arrow to the target. So we've had our stance set. We've had uh, the arrow knocked hands in place, and then we've gone through a posture check from the ground up, feet, knees, knees set back, hips tucked to take the curve out of the back, and shoulder set, head turned to the target. So now we're ready to set up. And so in the setup, we're going to lead with the bow hand, arm extended. So we're not going to do one of these. Okay, we're going to protect our shoulder position by having this bow arm extended and it leads in the raising of the bow. The release hand, release arm follows. It's raised as a unit, like so. So it's important to note here that your hands with compound release aid are about a foot apart. And uh, you cannot expand this compound bow while you're raising it. You know, the, the bow is just not designed to allow that. Uh, an important difference here between what we do with compound and what we do with recurve is the shoulder line. So the shoulder line, when I am presenting the bow, raising it up, my shoulder line is pointed well left of the target. So if I turn 90 degrees to the camera here, maybe you can see that. So the shoulder line is pointed well left of the target. And we have to deal with that when we're drawing the bow. We're going to have to rotate or coil that shoulder line at that time but not while we're raising. My hips remain open to the target. Remember I've tucked that pelvis. And if you have that pelvis tipped, then the hips will stay in position while your upper body coils as you draw the bow. So what else do we need to mention here? Uh, the arrow, is pretty much in line with the target as we do this. And we're going to draw the, the compound in line, as we say. Eyes are focused on the target. You know, that's the last thing that we set when we're doing the posture check is head turned to the target and eyes, your vision is focused on the gold if you're shooting the colored face. So eyes focused on the target. So it looks like this. 
and for me, I prefer my sight, the aperture, the scope, the pin to be raised slightly above the middle while my bow hand is underneath the spot. That's uh, the picture that I like to have when I'm raising the bow. One last piece. When we get raised and before we draw, we set this drawing shoulder back. So let me turn from the camera here again. Instead of having the shoulder out, we want it back. We need that shoulder back to protect it so that we use back muscles to help draw and do not overburden all the rotator cuff muscles around that ball and socket. So once again, don't leave the shoulder out, set it back. That should be the last thing you do before you draw the bow. Good. That's what I got, Frank. Yeah, um, trying to get Linda into the meeting. She's having a hard time. Well, it'd be That's nice all. if we let Linda in. I know, we better let Linda <laughs> in. Um, hold on one second, everyone. Let me just... Uh, Take care of some things okay. here, real quick. Yeah, technical difficulties. Yeah, well, We're you know, learning as we go. When you're doing things that are live, it uh, has these. Yeah. We have these moments, so we should be good. Yeah, I'm still learning on sharing the screen. <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny. Yeah. All right, Linda. Uh, hopefully, uh, you get this link that I'm sending here momentarily. You can join in, so that I can start chatting about. Uh, about hey, you want to do the uh, do your bear bow? Well, yeah. I mean, it's really not that much different other than shoulder alignment, and we we'll get into the idea of how to get into that setup position after, um, before. Well, as compared to draw to load and compound, when right. we are able to actually load and set the alignment versus setting the alignment at the setup position with recurve because when we draw, we have like that pre-draw on the string. Yes. We raise up and we're able to get into that position. Right, you're able to expand the recurve because there's very little force on the string when the bow is in brace position, mm -hmm. unlike the compound. That was probably Linda beeping in, I would hope. I don't know, see if... Uh, Again. What's that? Okay. I'll check one more time. Make sure I have anybody that's trying to get in. Nope, we're good. All right. Beautiful. Hopefully, Linda is able to get on. We'd like to have her feedback as we ch chat about this. Um, so again, getting into the setup with Olympic recurve and or bare bow, the, the setup is essentially the same for both. There really shouldn't be any other issues. The only difference in, to consider um, in bare bow is that is string walking, you know, and what string walking is, is for people who are not familiar with bare bow is on a bare bow tab, a three finger under tab, we have hash marks. Those hash marks identify a distance, which is called a crawl. So you always start with the tab up against the knot. You set your thumb on the string at that hash mark and have to crawl down. An important part of setup is checking that crawl before you draw back. It's the same idea of checking, rechecking your hook with an Olympic recurve when we, we check our hook before we get into that, um, before we get into setup, make sure our hand's in the correct position. Well, the difference with this is that this can move and it has happened and I have had to reset my crawl multiple times because there's no split finger. There's nothing to stop my hand from moving. So what I'll have to do is I find my hash mark, slide my tab down and then set my hook. That hook is something that you need to check and make sure that it does not slide on the string before you decide to get into your setup position. With that being said, moving into setup. Again, leading with the bow hand, 
raised to draw, raising on a hinge, which was a way that it was described during my level four, raising everything as if it's in the same plane. But the what I like to, to use as a physical or a, a verbal cue when working with a shooter is that this hand, this hand, this elbow, and this elbow raise on that plane together when coming to draw. Um, obviously with recurve, your hands during the setup position aren't going to be one foot apart or about roughly because we are able to set that tension and able to start setting that barrel of the gun as we raise to draw. But as we come into setup, that barrel of the gun should be completed. Admittedly, learning NTS, that was probably one of the most difficult things for me because I don't know if I ever understood that how important keeping the hips over the heels was in regards to the core engagement. Um, I think that's a, a very, that's a very important step that is often missed in the teaching or learning of recurve archery. Keep, so that's, that's when you keep those hips open to the target and you're not, you're not allowing those hips. So in this instance, and I used to do this, and I'm going to show it to you. I used to do this to set the alignment. Mm -hmm. Do you see how I turned at my hips as, as compared to, um, raising with the arrow in line with the target compared to this. You see the difference between the two movements. There's still maybe a little tiny bit of hip movement. Hopefully not. That's one of the things that we work. Right. If you, you rotate your hips, your legs remain like Gumby legs. Remember yeah. the so, little Gumby rubber figure? Yeah. So and, here you can see those hips move compared to Yeah, so we, we want the core to rotate, but the hips to remain open to the target. Now, the curve out of the back. Yeah, it, you, that enables you to keep the quads engaged, keep the glutes engaged, turn engaging the core to draw your bow, and ultimately allow you to get more holding weight into your back. So. A full setup for me looks like this. Setting that barrel of the gun, probably two thirds, three quarters of the way drawn here. It's a very big adjustment when you don't do it correctly. It takes some significant amount of time to get used to it. And a lot of times because it could be almost uncomfortable in the beginning, a lot of shooters sort of skip some of those steps. You have to stay the course to get used to it. That importance of raising on that platform, that same hinging up and remaining is super, super important in order to get into your back. So for me, hook, quads, glutes, posture. When I raise, turn the core. I put my palm of my hand over the target face here at 18 meters, typically. Um, as I draw to load, coming down just below the chin, an Olympic recurve, you're within an inch of the chin. Um, I come and then I elevate her into my bare bow anchor. Mm -hmm. So you know, that, that position at setup allows that barrel of the gun to be maintained. You start it. And it stays. Mm -hmm. A lot of recurve shooters oftentimes draw in a similar fashion to compound where their shoulders are actually pointed, their shoulder mm -hmm. line is still pointed to the left. So when they get the full draw, those, those shoulders end up parallel to the arrow or sometimes not even mm -hmm. in a different angle. And I can, sh and I'll show you what that would look like. Right. So shoulders are pointed left right. now, mm -hmm. but Shoulders are still pointed left. Yes, so that's that's a compound setup, what you're just showing here right now. Yep. And with the recurve, because you're going to load to peak weight, yeah, you've got to have that shoulder line rotated now. Set that shoulder line in line to the bow hand. Yeah. Yep. Because you've got to, to set that bone line 
to carry the full load of the bow, the peak weight of the bow. Yep. Right, and we want the bone line to do that. Correct. And we don't want to rotate that shoulder line under the high load. So. And the difference to explain, and Linda has talked about this before, the difference between compound and Olympic recurve, and why that shoulder line, specifically this shoulder, is different is because in recurve, you're holding more weight at full draw versus in, in compound, you have you don't have as much pressure on the scrub shoulder as opposed to the um, in the recurve because of the amount of tension at full draw holding full peak weight of a recurve. So let's switch real quick. He's joined, good. Linda was in Linda's in. Room. All right, Linda, we'll take care of you here yeah. right now. Let's see here. Ask to unmute. There we go. Yep. Sorry about that, Linda. I was talking. <laughs> okay. Let me get you up on video, Linda. Welcome, okay. Linda. Welcome. <laughs> Small group today. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. This this is a, a different um, different uh, type of recording. So it's there we go. Let me see what I can do. Oh, I know what I had to do. I'll just go ahead and proceed. I can see Larry. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, Linda, we went through uh, major differences in the setup position regarding shoulder line mostly uh, between compound and recurve, recurve and bare bow together. Uh, so uh, that's something you might want to elaborate, elaborate on. Uh, and if you repeat some things we already said, that's okay. It should be repeated. So. Yeah, so what what are the major differences between the two disciplines? As far as setup? Yes. So setup for the recurve, you'll have what we call barrel the gun, which is the bow arm wrist through the bow arm shoulder to the draw side shoulder is a straight line. We call, fondly call that barrel of the gun. Right. So they're kind of going to look like a triangle at that point. And then the compound, their shoulder line is going to still remain the same as their hips and their feet, whatever their open stance is that they're using. And then as they draw, they're going to coil and draw with the big muscles of the back and set that straight line during the drawing process. Since the compound has to remain at brace height when you lift the bow because it's a pulley system, there's no way they can have barrel of the gun at setup. Right. Yeah. Demo your barrel of the gun uh, facing that direction. So what's the shoulder management there? The shoulder line is set in what yeah. we call barrel of the gun. Definitely for, for those of you who have struggled with finding that alignment, it is a, a significant adjustment from someone who like myself, who used to turn at my waist to try to find that alignment and break that habit. I advise you to work as hard as necessary to break that habit because it makes a significant difference the ability to right. hold a recurve steady at full draw. And, and you pointed out when you did your level four that that was a difficult- uh, A huge transition for me. Right, yeah, same for me. When I did my level four, getting that barrel of the gun set uh, was very foreign to me mm. because of how much compound shooting I've done. Uh, mm. Of course, I shot recurve as a kid, but I, I didn't know anything about barrel of the gun. Sure. And uh, so when I had to learn setting the barrel of the gun in the setup step, 
it, it took me six months to get a feel for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm a slow learner, but <laughs> it took that long. It's taken, it's taken me, I would say I'm probably ballpark four months now. And it's just in the last few weeks that I've started seeing a difference. But I've also, I've also changed um, my release mm -hmm. and follow through with Fairbow um significantly as well and that's kind of gone a little bit away from nts but that's a different discussion down the road mm -hmm. it's the idea and, and the reason that has happened is because the idea of tension and direction yeah the, the, that 50 50 split and um but that's like i said that's a future podcast mm -hmm. as we as we get into the expansion and release and follow through we'll talk about that but um yeah, so I can I can add some things that probably might help some people. Hopefully they can see. I'm a left handed archer. So you can see here's my bow arm and you can clearly see my shoulder lines pointed off over this way. Mm -hmm. But when I turn shoulder line is here to here. So if I turn to make a straight line, watch how my wristband moves forward. Yeah. Just by straightening this to this, making that straight line. And this is a mistake that the compounds do. I'm not pulling out of the socket. It's just when I turn, the bow side wants to move forward. The recurve is doing that actually as they lift the bow. Right, yep. Whereas the compound, when they go to draw, you gotta remember that this side wants to go forward as you turn. Right, yeah, so. And so draw, let, it, let it drive forward and help you. And another trick to help you get this is to put a piece of tape here, here, and here, and see if you can get an overhead camera and make a straight line. And people want to overturn. However open your stance is, is how much you're turning. If you have a very open stance, you're turning a lot. If it's not very open, like mine, you're turning very small. And really what it is, is the rearward mo movement of the bow hand whichever recurve or compound, the rearward movement of the release hand is because of the turn. I never pulled, but my hand moved back simply because I'm turning to make a straight line here. Another way to think of it is make your shoulder line parallel to your arrow. So you're not parallel to your arrow, make it parallel to the arrow. But you turn as a unit. The biggest mistakes that happen is people that want to drive this shoulder forward, exaggerating, and drive that shoulder back you're going to get hurt it's a simple little turn but let the other side drive forward because right. that's what he wants to do yeah i would say most compounders when they go through the draw stroke neglect the bow shoulder they don't coil their torso and get that uh shoulder line parallel to the arrow so they don't set the bow shoulder with any kind of firmness it's just neglected yeah and so their follow-through then shows that actually both disciplines both disciplines react. fail to set the bow shoulder and whether it's set to set up for the recurve or the compound drawing they fail to set that and then the minute the load hits it comes up right and now you're okay. compromised so you really have to get tight underneath here with the triceps and make that tight. So when the load occurs, it won't want to ride up. Yeah, that could also be that that front shoulder running up can become with a youth shooter indicative of their draw length, they're growing. And that's where they start to compensate. If they already had that a weak section of their draw mm -hmm. cycle, you'll see that shoulder start to creep up because they're, we, what do we stress? No head movement, consistent anchor, bringing the release to the face. Well, they continue to do that, but if they're a growing individual, this could start going like this. Yeah, a shoulder, week, shoulder rides a month, up to, two to months. Compensate. And then all of a sudden you look at them, their scores <laughs> go down, their consistency goes down. And all of a sudden you see them before you know it, they're shooting like this. Yeah. And you can't figure out why. And that's one of the things that as you watch youth shooters grow, you have to be, pay very close attention to those things. Yeah, yeah, that pretty much covers most of it. Yeah, Linda, you're you're uh, that was such a good explanation of explaining turning it as a unit, and the that idea of when the 
you said it then afterwards in the shop, right? You see people in this. Yep, this that's what happens. Yep. Yep, they, they have failed to load the bow shoulder side, failed to set that with firmness. And so it's a, a weak angle, lots of muscle use. Yep. And so they run into fatigue. Yeah, and well, and again, I, I mentioned this before as well, when we talk about target panic, target panic loves bad tension. And that's this shoulder coming up, that's a bad tension. You can't maintain that for 60, 72, 144 arrows, mm -mm. not consistently. And target panic then starts to, that, that you, I'm not saying you get target panic from that. I'm saying you open the door to it because you're not yeah. biomechanically stabilizing the weight of the bow. So you can concentrate, your body can function the way it's supposed to yeah. overall. Well, yeah, you, you know the site's not going to stay near the middle very long. Right. <laughs> and so you get anxious and get the arrow down range and then you're into a downward spiral. Yes, exactly, exactly. Anything else you'd like to add, Linda? Well, we just had a question that said, when coaching a beginner, do you teach raise and rotate as two separate actions when they become familiar with the action and convert it into one motion? Um, yes and no. I demonstrate just like I just did that when they rotate, the bow arm goes forward. But any, we used to be very prescriptive on set to set up with the recurve. And I assuming this question relates to the recurve. We used to be very prescriptive about it, but now we go with, at the completion of setup, have the barrel of the gun set. That's the number one goal. Completion of setup, that barrel of the gun that Frank demonstrated there with his recurve has to be set with a recurve. Now, it becomes very personal. Some people like to lift high, and I still haven't coiled, and then they're gonna turn down. So as they coil, They're going to lift high and it's just easier for them to turn at the top. Some, as they lift, they turn. Doesn't matter. But as long as, long as they hit the barrel of the gun at the completion of setup before they draw. Right. And the barrel of the gun has to be set before you put the full load of the recurve bow onto your bones. Yep. So the, for, the, for the national training system, the draw step becomes much, very small. Most of the quote, opening the ball, bow, string moving back is it set up. Okay. Yeah, I think you also just to, I think maybe part of that question may have also been toward younger shooters. It's go, it can be very difficult to get youth, youth as in eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, so you need to teach them this. I, I have them cross their arms and do this, just exaggerated and then maybe put a line down on the ground and then they turn to where their shoulder lines parallel to that line. Mm -hmm. And yep. then have them lift and do it air bow, stretch band. And then one of the big things to keep in mind that the whole goal here is the rearward movement again of the draw side is because of the turning and you're using this big corridor of muscles. So it's never pulling. Not with the recurve or the bare bow. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Good at explanation. Yeah, I think that definitely covered setup. Yes. And what we yeah, I think do. we've covered that. Pretty There's well. any other questions before we uh, we end it? We um, I want to quick log in here and take a look. We don't have a few guests today. But that's yeah, okay. we thank everybody for joining again. Yep. Uh, this is just one more of our series of little uh, coach talk things, uh, coach topics. So uh, we'll post what we decide to do next week in another day or so. Yep, and we'll continue our, our journey through the NTS and then, you know, discussing the topics okay. as we go through it and try to cater as much to Olympic yeah. barebow um, and compound as much as we can. Right and maybe some other topics in there. And then again, if you guys have questions um, or something comes up or even a coaching situation that Linda or Larry, myself or Doc or anybody that we converse with can maybe address those. And that may end up being a podcast topic. It, it happened last week and it, we're not opposed to 
trying to help you guys as things come up so that you we can help you right away and that affects your archers in a right. positive manner yeah. so well, I know Linda's off to uh, Arizona Cup on Thursday morning. Correct, yeah. Arizona Cup, first use that event. Yeah, so you'll be what, flying home Monday? Uh, Sunday evening. Sunday evening. Yep. Okay, well, you might be able to join us next week. Maybe. If you're awake. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If that, if that uh, what is that? Um, yeah. The flight doesn't get you. Yeah. yeah. Well. Do you change time zones for that? Yes. Well, I think so this time of year. Yes. Okay. Well, at least, yeah, your central so time. So it's only like so. an hour. One, probably one hour. Yeah, yeah. One hour. The yeah, flight yeah. Like, on. yeah. yeah. Okay. At least twice Not 10 like my son did last week flying to Kazakhstan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us, Linda. Yep. Thank you for joining us once again. Yeah. And, thanks a bunch, uh, Linda. Okay. If you guys have any questions, you know, shoot us a message on Facebook. And Linda, yep. good luck to you and yep. all of your shooters out of Arizona. Yeah. Uh, what Colton for me out there? Colton Lash. Oh, well, he'll be out there. Okay. Yep. Yep. So tell him, tell him your, 